and welcome to you all. You are very welcome. For the benefit of those in the room, we have an audience online that's almost as big as the room here. So I must say hello to the camera. Good morning to all of you. This is a truly international gathering. So in total, we are talking to about 60 people today, either in the room or remotely. Uh, we've upped our online game. We learned a bit from doing this seminar last year. Uh, I've just been having a bit of a tease with the lads from IMCA. This stand here you see with a very expensive camera on is a cake decorator stand, which we bought on eBay for £3.95. And it means that Puisi can just move the camera around seamlessly. So when we walk away, the camera will follow us. So I hope this is going to be a really good experience, not just for you in the room, but also for the delegates who are online. I'm Mike Schwartz, Chief Executive Officer of the International Institute of Marine Surveying and the Marine Surveying Academy. Um, just a couple of house rules before we get going. Uh, there is no planned fire alarm today, so if you do hear the bells and whistles, I'm actually not sure which way we go out, but there are some signs out there to the left, out through the door to the left. It'll be a real one. All of our catering today, we break for teas and coffees, and lunch is served through the doors there, which we've closed now, but it's all self-contained. If you haven't found the toilets, it's a bit of a trek. You need to go along there and down one level. Um, the Wi-Fi code is here if you need the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's R-U-L is the is the Wi-Fi. It's called R-U-L, Regents University. So I think that's all I need to say as far as the housekeeping notes are concerned. I wanted to make this, for me, half an hour simply of a review. Now, a review suggests that you're looking back in time. And yes, I do want to look back in time to, to where we started four years ago, or actually five years ago. The, the scheme's been live for four years. But I do also want to look forward because we are coming up towards a five-year renewal, and that will take place, uh, our first AVI has come up for a five-year renewal in June of next year. And that might sound like a year away, which is a long time, but let me assure you, there's quite a lot of hard yards to go through for us to think about what that might look. So I want to start with just and my, my screen's not, could you just advance my slide? It's not working. It's because we rebooted the system. Push it forward one. There we go. Thank you. Just a little bit about the Marine Surveying Academy. You probably aren't totally familiar with who we are in the behind the scenes. Paul Homer, you rarely see Paul Homer. Paul Homer has sat on the IMS management board for a number of years. Paul is the director of this business. Hillary, who I'm sure most of you will know, and I don't know where she's gone now, but she's around in the room somewhere. Um, Hillary is a director of the business. There she is, Hillary at the back. <clears throat> I am also the director of the business. So we are the three executive directors. We report into the IIMS uh, limited board. A lot of corporate stuff here, but it's just interesting to know sometimes. But Marine Surveying Academy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the International Institute of Marine Surveying. We have two non-exec directors, both of whom are here today, actually. Ian Coates, who is in the room and you'll be hearing from shortly, <clears throat> and Mike Proudlove, who you'll be hearing from much later in the day. I know Hillary was keen, I don't have a slide on it, but Hillary was keen that I should say just a little bit more about the Marine Surveying Academy. Um, we are working heavily in the area of accreditation, certification. Um, it's something that we've found a bit of a niche for and we are pushing into all sorts of new spheres. For those of you who don't know, we run something called the Registered Marine Coatings Inspectors course, RMCI. Um, this was to deal with an issue in the uh, super yacht coating sector. Um, half the super yachts coming out of these big yards and we're talking about many, many millions of pounds, dollars, whatever in some case billions, uh, was subject to litigation because of the quality of the paint job. And of course, some of these vessels now, you're putting 12, 13, 14 coats on to get the finish that uh, the super yacht uh, owner wants, and that was going wrong. So we work very closely with industry. We work closely with our partners, Icomia, the Super Yacht Builders Association, um, all sorts of people who have a vested interest to try and drive the standards up in that sector. Five years on, that scheme's also five years old, and 120 have now gone through that process and got the badge. Hillary's just run another course in Amsterdam relatively recently. We're going to the States with that later this year and so on. So we're continuing to build uh, on the RMCI. And I think the most interesting thing with RMCI is that the standard has been written into the latest ISO standard that's been released for super yacht coating finishes. So we are extremely proud of that. 
Uh, the other bit of work that we started again more than five years ago, probably six years ago now, was called ERMI. Don't you just love all these acronyms? International Registered uh, Marine Insulation Inspectors, I can never remember it. ERMI, ERMI is much easier. And these are guys who are looking at flow line corrosion on pipes, quite specialist, quite niche. 100 people came through that standard. And uh, that was run originally by a company called Wood Group Kenny, who many of you will know. Wood Group Kenny went through a complete mashup when the uh, oil price crash came and the downturn came. And uh, that sector has been pretty quiet, but it's just reactivating now. And again, same with the uh, RMCI standard. Uh, we're told that the new ERMI standard, which is being uh, rewritten and reborn at the moment, will also be written into the new ISO. So, you know, we're moving in some quite exalted circles, and I'm very proud to be, you know, to, to be able to say that. I don't know why this isn't working, but you might have to advance my slide. There we go. It's going now. Okay. Let's start with the branding. Working in conjunction with IMCA, Adam, who you'll hear from later, was uh, instrumental in kicking this on. We have looked to develop a new logo. Here it is, uh, a nice modular logo in the left-hand corner there. Um, that is now appearing on everything that we do. Uh, we didn't have a situation where we were using the same logo that IMCA were using sometimes on documentation. It's all now the same, and that's what you'll expect to see. I think it's fresh, it's contemporary, and it's vibrant. We've got the man outside cleaning the streets, wonderful. <laughs> Four years on, and it's perhaps appropriate, just before I go through this, to make Mark blush yet again, again, because on Monday night we held the IMS annual dinner uh, down at the beautiful Carlton House Terrace on the Mall, and I was thrilled to be able to present Mark Ford with a, an IMS Blue Water Award. We rarely give out Blue Water Awards. I think I've given out four in my five years, and that's really to recognize the work that Mark and his team uh, have done over that period of time to help us. The Blue Water Award is given to an external person or organization who's been instrumental in helping the IMS uh, with things that we do. So um, I think you should give Mark a round of applause. <laughs> Mark, I and various others at the time sat in an office, well, your office, five years ago, and uh, you guys said, well, could we develop a scheme? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I've only been in this job three months. I don't know. I'm not going to say no, am I? Yes, of course we can. And uh, it, it's fair to say that what we've ended up with probably is quite a long distance away from where we started and how we actually thought it might go. But that proves that the scheme, whilst being robust, has also been hugely flexible. And when these guys from IMCA have sort of challenged us and said, we want to do this, this, and this, we've been able to say, that's fine. We can do this, this, and this, and we'll do that, that, and that. So we've been able to synergize really going forward. And I think particularly in the last year, 18 months, we've really come much closer together. And uh, behind all of this is a very strong EC mid steering committee chaired by Stephen Burke, not with us today. And uh, we are now an integral part and work very much as part of that committee. So, you know, we're feeding into this from all, all angles. The scheme, quite simply, we were invited to develop a scheme and to manage and run a third-party accreditation program for IMCA for those who are conducting eCMID audits and inspections. IMCA granted us a five-year contract. That's just come up. We haven't got the signed contract for the renewal, but I know it's in the, in the wings, so it's on its way. So we'll be contracting for another five years to run the scheme. Uh, I don't want to reminisce too much, but being invited to develop a world-class uh, accreditation scheme actually was a challenge, but also a huge privilege. And there are many practicalities, and it's trying to work through those practicalities in a way and saying, well, what's reasonable here? How do we actually know? How do we find out whether or not somebody really does understand about the vessel type they want to go and audit and inspect? And I touched on, some of you heard me talk about forms. I mean, how difficult is it to create a form? Do you know what? It's really difficult to create a form because sometimes English isn't people's first language. Uh, sometimes things get lost in translation in the form. And, and that, you know, we have sleepless nights over that. And then you have to look at the assessment criteria. How are we going to develop that? Who's going to do the assessing? You need this peer group of uh, champions, if you like, at the top of the tree. Who's going to be the trainers? Who's going to train the trainers? And there's, again, all challenges. Websites and communications. Who's going to manage all of this at our end? Because we didn't really have any staff. Hillary, 
Hillary was it, and me. Here's the MSA team as it is today. Hillary, you know, they're, they're, everyone's here today. Sharon's in the front row here. You, many of you know Sharon. And Sharon, my thanks to you for organizing so much of today. Thank you. Uh, Puisi, who is, uh, sits there and you know, manages the new applications, looks after your CPD. Um, we're all human people. Talk to us. You know, um, we're always happy to hear from any of you. The IMS team as a whole, we include MSA as part of IMS, really. We're only 11 people, so we're quite a small group. Um, we're very professional about the way we operate, and I think we push way, way beyond our, uh, our sheer numbers of people in the office. So, that extra year that Mark and I uh, gave ourselves, um, really, that was about focusing on the project and looking how to develop it. And it did take a year, um, really, to have something on paper that we actually were happy with. And the launch was met with mixed reaction. You know, it was disruptive change in your marketplace. People say, why do I need to do that? I've been doing this stuff for 10 years. Why do I need to prove my competency now? Well, I've talked a lot about this in the last three days because we're, this is the last day of our IMS three-day, four-day event, actually. So a lot of you have heard me because one or two of you in the room have been to those events. You've heard me talk about standards. We are now asked to certificate ourselves for almost everything we do in the UK. It doesn't matter what we do and around the world. You know, you've got to prove your competency in something or other through an exam, through an accreditation, through a certification process. It's just the way it works. So why would it be any difference in this market? Some, however, early adopters welcomed it with open arms and really, really embraced it. Wasn't necessarily true initially with the vessel operators, but certainly some of the guys, some of you guys, doing this work said, yes, you know, we need to jump on this. This is a really important thing to do. Some resented it. Uh, I think now, four years on, those who resented it have realized that this is a scheme that does have uh, scope and uh, is an important thing. So if I'm proud of one other thing, it is the fact that we, with IMCA, have helped to transform what was a pretty unregulated sector. Uh, you know, guys getting on board a jack-up vessel who frankly didn't know what a jack-up vessel was. That just doesn't seem right to me in this day and age. My screen's frozen again, please see if you give it, I don't know why. Thank you. So the fundamentals of accreditation, the scheme was designed first and foremost to be objective, not subjective. What it means is that Competencies, we are trying to match competencies against certain vessel types, as you all know this. And how would we objectively assess what was the process? And the result, I'm pleased to say, is that only those who could prove their competency in certain areas have got the badge. Some people have come back and said, well, I'd like to now apply for that category or that category. That's fine. We encourage that. We know people are always learning new skills, developing, and we'd encourage you, if you wish to apply for new vessels, then do. I wouldn't know the stats, Hillary. I don't know how many people have applied for all vessel types and got it. I suspect there are very few. Yeah, very few. Let me just give you a few stats. Um, is Ian in the room? Yeah. I probably owe you a fiver, Ian, by the way. You, you said we'd end up at 500, I said we'd end up at 700. Um, we've actually had 600 who've applied for accreditation and uh, 466 have, have gained the accreditation. So you're winning the fiver at the moment. But I think the scheme is maturing now. There's no doubt about that. We don't see anything like the volume of new applications coming through. And to be fair, uh, without stealing Hillary's thunder, some of those applications coming through now are far trickier than some of the earlier ones are. So these are people perhaps for whom eSEMIT is not a regular day-to-day -day occurrence. Hundreds have done the one-day training, uh, but there are still 50 who need to complete that one-day training. And we are getting a bit brutal now. If you don't attend the training within two years, you're suspended. And that means you can't operate. So again, we, we've started to get a little bit more draconian with that. Why? Because this is a valuable club, if you like, that you're all part of. You either play by the club rules or you shouldn't be in the game. And the other thing that's, I think, worth noting is, of course, is that vessel operators have, in some cases, become insistent. Uh, certainly Siemens, Vattenfall, uh, Orsted, three that I can think of off the top of my head, have all now said, if you don't carry that badge, you're going to find it quite hard to get on board our vessels and do an audit and inspection. So the industry is driving that as well. 
I touched on flexibility. Flexibility is the key in my opinion. Uh, as I said, Imca has made quite a lot of changes actually, Mark, over there, you're gonna tell us about some more changes that you're pushing through at the moment in a, in a minute. And it's about being able to accommodate those changes with no loss of standard or no degradation of the standard. And if anything, what we're doing actually is I think we're probably driving the standard higher. We're certainly not driving it lower. Um, so, you know, you guys are still on a journey with us and that journey is still evolving as we go through. We moved from a paper logbook uh, to a paperless electronic version. Those pile up in Priest's inbox and uh, that's where they end up. Um, so we, we're moving towards a paperless environment. In fact, RMS will all be paperless by September. I think MSA will be paperless by Christmas. That's our aim. Um, and that's quite a scary place for some people, storing things in the cloud and all of that. We launched the eCMID CPD app uh, that we rolled out, I think a year ago. No, it's not a year, is it? When did we roll that out? Early this year. Lost track of time. Almost a year now. Yeah, don't forget to claim your CPD points for today. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Puisi can help you get online to use the app. It is neat. We have the same app made for us for IMS by a company called EDOT Solutions, uh, Rushin Dial and his team in Goa. And uh, it's a nice piece of technology. It's neat and it works. But if you're having any problems with the app, please shout. And as I said, just to reiterate the fact that we work very, very closely now with the EC image steering committee, I think is, is a real bonus. So thank you to Mark for sort of pulling us into that fold. It's worth just touching on some events we've got coming up. Um, accreditation courses for anyone in the room who needs to do an accreditation course. There's one in Singapore, 6th of August, Amsterdam on the 27th of September. We're running uh, another AVI day out in Singapore on the 7th of August. We're backing that into a two day event with an IMS day as well. Open for real time delegates and online delegates as well. This online thing has become very important actually. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you can take a feed. And then something we've just added into the schedule on the back actually of an IMCA event. Uh, and again, my thanks to Mark and his team because I know a couple of you are staying over to attend this event. So we're going to run a one day renewable seminar in Amsterdam, which will feature a couple of speakers from IMCA. Siemens, I know Siemens Games here. Um, Games have also planning to speak. And have we have we finished our schedule yet of speakers? Not quite. So we're still working on that. You put that date in your diary. Again, that'll be available to online delegates as well as uh, real time delegates. I promised I would touch on five year reaccreditation, um, and we have a handful who uh, whose five year anniversary falls in June of next year. Um, so. We've had a very brief dialogue. I can't pretend that it's been anything more than a brief dialogue with uh, the IMCA steering committee. Uh, try and decide what that process should look like. And there are one or two things we've decided. We've decided it shouldn't cost you a lot of money to come forward for your reaccreditation. We're not trying to bleed you dry of cash. That's not what it's about. And there shouldn't be a lot of red tape. So we're not gonna try and make you jump through ridiculous hoops to get your five-year reaccreditation. Is that a fair opening statement, Mark? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. So we will want you maybe to do a three or four hour half day seminar. It can be online. You don't have to come face to face. And we'll put on lots of those at the time so that you can hop onto those. They won't be hugely expensive. But it is about us saying, we just want to take a look at you. We want to have a look at your file. We want to have a look at what you've been doing over the last five years make sure everything looks great, and then we can put a tick in the box. All right, I'm glazing over that, but uh, th that's the gist of it. And uh, we now need to, at our next meeting, it's not September, it's August actually, yeah. Our next meeting in August, we just need to put some more thoughts down, so we'll be going to IMCA saying, this is what we think, this is our proposal, and uh, we'll try and nail that down. And then get communication out to the ECM community, because it's important everybody knows um, you know, what will be expected. So as I've said here, it should be simple, but it must be transparent. Um, we are due to have an audit on this system. We haven't done that yet, or the, the scheme. So we are hoping to get a third party audit done this year. And of course, many of you are auditors, inspectors. You know what auditors like to do, like to come in and look and check and make sure it's all does what it says on the tin. 
So it needs to be a transparent process. As I've said, there'll be a need to attend a uh, half day maybe accreditation course. We will look for your currency in the marketplace. We will use CPD, certainly as one of those primary things. We'll look at your file, as I've said. We keep red tape to a minimum and it should be inexpensive. Right, so does anybody have any questions? Anything that people want to raise at this point? I, I, so the, the question for those online is, is, has everybody got to do the reaccreditation on the anniversary of your fifth year as an AVI? Uh, yes, you will be expected on the fifth anniversary. So there's, I don't know how many we've got next June. Maybe there's half a dozen. I think Ian might be one of those. Yeah, Ian's one. Um, so I don't know when you're, when you came through the process. How long have you been in AVI? Last July. So you've got another four years before you want to reaccredit you. So your accreditation lasts for five years and then we'll have a look. So you'll be notified ahead of your, whatever your due date is. I'm sure that will fall to pre -C to do probably, to notify you that the process for you will be open and there'll be a window of time. We haven't talked about what, how long that might be. You know, there might be a three month grace period or whatever. Six months grace period, Mark's saying a six month grace period to enable you to get that paperwork back in place so that we can reissue with another five years certification. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Was any monitoring done by clients, oil majors, whatever, if we have the recordings and that, will that be a part of the monitoring scheme from your point of view in the reaccreditation? Uh, it's, a good, it's a good question. So the question for the, the question, I think, if I've got this right, for the online delegates is: Will we be talking to some of the oil majors and other major players uh, as part of the reaccreditation process? I don't know, actually, Mark. I'm I'm not sure. Um, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I. Th uh, yes, I think almost certainly we will want to look at a report or two as part of the process, but to be decided and debated. But to me, yes, that would be a logical thing to do. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Slightly different type of question. Yeah. Like we have this five yearly thing. Which yeah. Is fine. Yeah. Every, every other thing has five yearly. Why are we so rigid on every yearly? Because presently the market is not the most buoyant, and some of us are struggling to keep up the speed. I, I, so the question is why every five years, maybe, and why not annually? No, no, why we're already doing it annually. I see what you mean. You're, 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 you're updating annually, okay. Yes. I suppose that's a good question. I don't know is the answer. Um, Hilary, do you want to comment on that? Or? You're, you're, no one can hear you. You'll need to come and speak up here. No, you're, you're, you need, hang on a second. Okay, so the annual, the annual renewal is designed to make sure that you are current within the marketplace. So on an annual basis, we want to look at your CPD to make sure that you are progressing uh, your pr continuous professional development and that you are actually doing something within the industry that can count towards keeping you current. On a five yearly basis, we just want to make sure that that is still all happening, that you are still um, working within in that arena that we can actually pull that together and also because so many things change and we've had a lot of change in the last year or two and there's more to come we want to make sure that you've taken notice of all the updates that are going on that you're still conversant with the e-database so 
when we're talking about maybe a half day online course, it might be as much information giving to you and consolidating that information as it is making sure you're current and that you're still working within the right area of business. Okay. Yes, Kurt. It's also, it's also for the uh, additional, additional Just one vessels. You have supplements which, um, which cover, say, for example, LNG fueled vessels. This would be, uh, you know, during the normal CPD process, you're not actually being checked as to, uh, as far as uh, being current for those types of vessels. So as far as the revalidation process is concerned, would be expecting to see at least one inspection from your supplements that you are accredited for to make sure that you're still current for that, to, to be able to inspect those vessel types. So that's, that's one of the big, the big, big things really with the, uh, the revalidation. So on an annual basis, we're not necessarily looking at all your vessel types. We're looking that you are um, current within the marketplace. Whereas as, as Mark has clarified there, on a five-year renewal, we will be looking at your particular vessel accreditations. Okay? So it's a little bit, just a little bit more thorough, a little bit more in-depth so that we can revisit and we can maybe, because the other thing is that, that we're very keen to make sure that we are delivering training to you that you might need. So hopefully it will highlight some, maybe some training areas that we can supplement for you as well. Okay. Well, another question? Just one moment. Slightly, slightly related. How do you add a vessel type and how do you remove a vessel type if you find you're not doing seamage on that time of vessel? Okay, so it's very easy to remove a vessel. Just let Preeti know and she'll take it off your um, listing on the website and take it off your card and issue you a new card. To add a vessel type, uh, we have an additional vessel um, type application form. We'd like you to fill that out and we would need to see the documentary evidence that you supplied for your other vessel types. Very simple. Um, and then we would send it off to an assessor to review your documentary evidence um, and hopefully that, that would be fine and we'd be able to accredit you. And then we just update your card and your website listing. So not a difficult process. As Mike said earlier, if you've got any questions at all, the three of us in the office, we're always there for you to talk to. So please do pick the phone up and ask, ask the questions. Okay? Is that all right? Oh, let me go to Alex. Just one moment. This is so beyond the it's a little left field question. The, the audit which will be undertaken of the process of accreditation and resident, will the results of that be published and the roadmap to close any gaps issued? I have no problem with the results of an audit being published. Uh, it should not be a secretive process. Um, it's as much as anything for us to ensure that we are doing things right. We're used to audits. Um, our professional qualifications, we were audited for a number of years by Edexcel. That was definitely squeaky bum time because they were coming in looking for everything they could possibly find wrong. And they did, you know, because that's what auditors do. They're looking for things that are wrong. And that's how we learn. And uh, same with the MCA. The MCA audit our certifying authority within IMS every year. That's a particularly difficult day. We don't look forward to that at all. And we're talking now about vessel types um, and vessels. They give us generally four vessels within our certifying authority database they want to look at. And they come in with a couple of nice guys, but you know, they're, they're sharp surveyors who are auditors or have got auditing skills. And they then arrive on the day and say, and we've just chosen these two at random. So out of our fleet of vessels, suddenly you've got two files which we've not had a chance to get in to the finest possible order going in front of a couple of auditors. And uh, the MCA don't publish those. Um, but I'm absolutely certain if the MCA came and did an audit on the IMS and found us to be um, not very good, then we would probably have our contract revoked or we'd be on special measures or whatever. And the industry would get to know about that. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I've no reason for us to hide any findings if there are significant findings. I can't imagine there would be anything that would be too onerous, but if there were things out there, we want to learn as well. You know, it's all about trying to improve things all the time. So any final points? Otherwise my allotted time is up.
And uh, so can I just thank you very much. Uh, I wish you ongoing success um, in a marketplace that I know has had its significant challenges. And I know is still challenging. Um, but, you know, we couldn't have done this scheme without you. So I thank you for that. And thanks for your time. I'm going to hand over now to Mark and Adam. Thank you.